Yo, please behave yourselves. The following video has been approved for React Streamers by the Motion Picture Association of America. We've done our best to ensure there's no content against the TOS. It'll get you in trouble, but no guarantees. Okay. There you go. Wait, first of all, I love that. I fucking love that. That's awesome, dude. Fuck yeah. Okay. Fuck yeah. Shout out to the internet historian who literally was like, yeah, I like XQC. I don't give a fuck if he watches my shit. I only get heated when someone just re-uploads my video with no commentary or anything whatsoever. He's baiting. Now don't comment and just eat. Okay, now that now that I said this, I'm just not even gonna comment and I'm just gonna eat. Fuck, I already ate. I ate on the John Oliver video. Thank you, Thank Anonymous, you. for gifting us up the internet my historian. Children. We're here today to test the launch of my new cyber rocket. With this, I pledge to you that we will have a man on the Earth by the year 2030. But before we embark on this journey, we must talk about some of the mistakes of the past, so that we are not doomed to repeat them. Anyway, it was a sunny day in downtown Wuhan, and people were coughing in each other's mouths, as is customary in it. You're going viral, douchebag! I'm a big man and I'm gonna pull out my dick. February 2020, the virus is everywhere. But some were sneaking out, others not taking it seriously at all. Off directly in my face. <laughs> People were outside, going about their normal lives. Get drunk before everything closes. <gasps> it was time for drastic action. So, the mayors and governors from around the world I gathered don't together know. with us. Oh my god! Oh my god! Anorlando! That was awesome. I've been there, baby. i fucking been there. I, I ran through there, dude. Sorry, I got really excited for no reason. Anorlando! A solution to the problem of sneaking out while grounded. Snitching hotlines. Snitches get rewards. Simply take a picture of someone and text it to the official snitch line to put those rule breakers in their place. What's up, boys? Over here at Wendy's. What a scoop! Instant justice. Some people need to get the message. Send a photo <laughs> and we will make. <laughs> Ask gold. Oh, that's great. Sure that enforcement comes right away. But naturally, many New Yorkers did not take very kindly to this idea. So, they decided to text the hotline as well. Text after text came rolling in. What a success! Let's open the first one. Surprise! Turns out people weren't just sending in tips. They were sending the whole shaft. Oh Jesus, next one. Next. 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 Just close it. I can't, it's just going faster. Text after text was the same. Pictures of people giving the finger, dick pics, edgy Blasio memes. This isn't helping at all. Sir, our servers can't handle this amount of erotica all at once. Well, save some of the more tasteful nudes on this thumb drive and shut it down. And so it crashed. <laughs> but the snitches forgot the first rule of snitching. Mm-hmm. Snitches get unmasked by state sunshine laws. In Missouri, they have them. Two weeks after their own snitching program went live, turned out it was all subject to public record by anyone who requested it. So not only is all of this information not anonymous or private, it's published indefinitely on a government website with zero redaction. Oh dear. Of course, I'm a- What the f- Yo, how the fuck does internet historian know more about Missouri sunshine laws and these like- newsworthy events that occurred than I do, and I literally cover the news every day. I never heard of this. I mean, I know about sunshine laws, but I never knew that, like, this actually happened. Jesus Christ, dude. I mean, that's fucking insane. The fact that he knows this shit is... Spend too much time on reality TV and gaming now? Bitch, I will fucking yeet you into the sun. It's 
four hours and 13 minutes, <coughs> and we've only done political commentary so far. <coughs> you are a fraud. It's true. I'm not going to put any of those details here. But if you live in Missouri and you're a bit curious, the links as always are in the description down below. In Washington and Louisiana, people were unmasked too. In Frisco, Texas, they made an app for snitching as well. But there was backlash and it was terminated. In LA, the mayor's infamous snitches get rewards statement was walked back. In Victoria, a couple was fined $1,500 each for going on a drive to Lake's entrance and posting photos on social media. You did, sir. Uh, I certainly hope you got a license. Well. Warned that if they do it again, they would be arrested. Except the photos were from a year ago. We're not going to get everything right all the time, and we will make mistakes. But worst of all was the UK. Nine coppers for yeah. one lad. Well, you you're relax. ridiculous. Yeah. 194,000 calls in a single month had been made regarding. What the fuck are you doing, bruv? What the fuck are you doing? We're on a fucking island over here full of coronavirus. And all you fucking hooligans keep calling the fucking police on one another. You got a license for that snitching, bruv? Regarding people leaving their homes without a license, and tens of thousands of fines have been issued. The British frowned down on telltales. There's even an old nursery rhyme. Telltale tit, your tongue shall be slit. You make any more noise, and I'm calling the police. <laughs> I remember Show that me video. What you've got. Yeah! And yet, while normal everyday activities were being criminalized, regular crimes were being made de facto legal. Good job. The police do nothing around here. <gasps> and in major cities, it seemed as though everyone was going for the high score. His People aren't afraid to go out on the street at night. What can we do to increase crime? I have an idea. In New York and LA, oh, no. they experimented with reducing bail to zero, and it went exactly as you'd expect. But it wasn't enough. So they said, any burglaries up to a thousand dollars worth of goods would no longer result in the police showing up to the scene. So you're telling me that I can steal up to a thousand dollars worth uh, of goods and the police won't even try to make an arrest? Well, <laughs> well, maybe one day, if somehow they're identified. But you want everyone to wear a mask, too. Yes. So people walked up to the buffet and had their fill. If you could walk into a store, grab what you want, and just go. What would shopping look like? Oh my god! Call the police! Welcome to Amazon Go. Bro, like, at, at any point, does uh, internet historian factor into the, I don't know, the current situation that was at hand? When people were just, like, stealing this shit? Go to hit like and subscribe and ring that bell. Man, he is. 38 million people are unemployed, dog. I don't know how it works in Australia, but our government's not doing shit for us, okay? Motherfuckers out here trying to survive. Also, I didn't realize that cops always fucking... I didn't realize. I, I guess I missed the memo when my iPhone got stolen 11 times or some shit. And cops every single time laughed in my fucking face so i i didn't know that like cops actually would show up to anything below a grand larceny or even after a grand larceny I, I forgot that they were stopping crimes in magic world and the zero bail thing i bet if i looked into it would not be for anything like it, it would not be for violent crimes there's no fucking way Or, wait, imagine defending criminals 
Dude, if you've ever jaywalked, you're technically a criminal. Like, what do you mean? Everything is a crime. It's about who's enforcing it. It's about who's it, who it's being enforced on. Like, did you underage drink? You're a fucking criminal. Did you wear pants as a woman on Sunday in Kansas City? You're a criminal. Did you not already know he was a fucking chud? I don't know. I feel like his coronavirus video before was so was good that like I, I forgot that he was so chuddy. Oh, you're such a big man, Hassan. Anyway, my man says he's. In the UK, it's a crime to carry a fish suspiciously. What else? How else can you carry a fish? Anyway, the point I was trying to make is that, yeah, potheads. All potheads are fucking criminals. Like, it's dumb as fuck, dude. This nonsense, this, this notion, like, is... <laughs> Imagine defending criminals. Anyway, regardless, um, as I was saying... I'll look into the bail thing right now, actually, before we go. Sorry, I, I, I gotta look into the bail thing in California. Oh, you guys wanna know? You guys wanna know what another unintentional problem was for the zero uh, dollar bail? The reason why California actually stopped it, do you want to know? It wasn't because criminals were being released, as he implied. The reason why they fucking stopped the controversial zero bail policy was because cops were like, oh, bail is zero dollars, so we're just going to literally Excuse arrest me. every I'm protester. Sorry. I'm out of control. I apologize for that. I volunteered with the Tap in the morning with mobile order and pay at McDonald's. Get any size premium roast coffee or iced coffee for just 99 cents when you download them. And no insurance. The jail told the officers he would be immediately released if they brought him in. Anyway, as I was saying. No, cops were like, ah, fuck it, bail is, uh, bail is zero dollars, so let's just go after it. Let's just go off, kings. Also, I was right. I was fucking right. Oh, shocking. Am I a fucking mastermind of the American judicial process? No, I just have three and a half brain cells. Setting bail at zero for most misdemeanors and low-level felonies is not the same as fucking violent criminals running around the streets. The move was intended to reduce jail populations in a bid to slow the spread of the coronavirus. Who are you even arguing against? You said violent criminals thing in the first place, not anyone else? Bitch! Are you meaning to tell me that he was making a fucking big argument? What is this? What do you think this is, dude? You think Grand Theft Auto? Like, he's Reducing literally- bail to zero. And it went exactly as you'd expect. Why do you think he's showing Grand Theft Auto with AK-47s? Like, why do you think he's showing these motherfuckers here with, with like, AK-47? I know it's a joke. It's just fucking silly that you guys would act like he's not implying that, like, serious... Man, it's a joke. It's such a fucking silly cop-out measure, dude. Like, he's 100% implying that, like, criminals were roaming the fucking streets. Oh, you're such a big... Oh, it's a joke. Never son. mind. My bad, dude.
The fourth paragraph of the article explains it perfectly. The order makes perfect His sense. It keeps jails Hashan. from filling up with suspects who haven't been convicted of anything and who pose little danger to the public if they are sent home with instructions to come to court on the appointed date. That's crucial at a time when jails have become infection hotspots due to the inadequate hygiene and lack of social distancing. He never said violent. Oh my fucking God. You guys are such bitch made. Okay. He never said violent. So what the fuck is the problem then? Why is that even a problem then? Then it's actually good policy that he's making fun of. Please explain it to me. He's just describing what happened. Why are you trying to spin it? Wait, you can't simultaneously say he's describing what happened while also saying it's just a joke with satirical exaggerations. Half the chat's like, he's just saying what actually happened. People, like, criminals would just run around and they could just, like, go and do whatever the fuck they want. Like, come on, dude. Bitch, you're looking at a picture of Monopoly, man. Two people from Game of Thrones and the mayor in New York with the Dark Souls gear on. Could it possibly be hyperbole? Oh, I didn't recognize that as long as you were making a joke that the underlying political uh, misinformation that you're delivering is totally acceptable as long as you're making a fucking joke. I didn't recognize that the internet historian was actually a prison abolitionist and therefore he was turning around and making a joke about chuds lying or exaggerating the, the impact of people who are non-violent criminal offenders who are absolutely going to uh, end up going to their fucking... I did not recognize that I had actually Excuse cultivated me. a community of imbecile, troglodyte morons who immediately turn around and go, local man shouts at memes, or it's just a joke. I can't tell if this is a fucking bait, or, or if I legitimately have, like, a complete moronic audience. I make jokes all the fucking time. I go over the top all the fucking time. What I'm criticizing here isn't the fucking joke, stupid. I even laughed at it when he showed the fucking Grand Theft Auto shit. How the fuck did this happen? Like, how do I have so many fucking idiotic morons in my chat right now? Ah, oh, it's a joke, lol! You're seething way too hard over a one-off joke about $0 bail being a funny premise? It's not. It's a fucking perfectly sensible premise that actually ended up backfiring on the people anyway. If it's a joke, if it's a joke, why don't you joke about certain things? Just say the N-word in a joke then as a white guy around a black dude, okay? It's just a joke, bro. Come on. You make literal chud zero brain arguments when you fucking say it's just a joke, lol. Like, I'm not talking about the joke. The joke itself is funny. Yeah, I think that this is a funny fucking image. I even think that, like, the fucking prisoners being released is funny. But ultimately, the point that he's trying to make is zero bail means criminals run free or roam free. It's fucking bullshit. And it's also a chud-like meme. But most importantly, it's misinformation. So ironically, for a guy who did such a great video about the coronavirus, where he made fun of people running off of misinformation, he turned around and he also delivered some misinformation. <sighs> Let's keep going. So they said, any burglaries up to $1,000 worth of goods would no longer result in the police showing up to the scene. So you're telling me that I can steal up to a thousand dollars worth of goods and the police won't even try to make an arrest. Well, <laughs> again, I don't know how it fucking runs in Australia, but cops aren't exactly running around stopping fucking thousand dollar arrests from, be from happening. Well, maybe again, listen, one of the greatest Nick Mullen takes of all time is if you want, after having your shit stolen, there is no better person to come into your house three hours later and just put their fucking arms around their around, arms around their belly and go, I don't know, I guess we should take some notes, then fucking cops, okay? That's it. 
Maybe one day, if somehow they're identified. <laughs> but you want everyone to wear a mask, too. I mean, I can make jokes, too. Yeah. Cops are fat as fuck, and they don't do shit, and virtually are, are completely oh, fucking oblivious, man, and do Jeff, very little to actually solve fucking crime. Can't find it anywhere there you go. That's reason. the joke. Now fucking... Now re out over over cops, Ex except that's not only a joke, but it's also the truth. Yes. So people walked up to the buffet and had their fill. If you could walk into a store, grab what you want, and just go, what would shopping look like? Oh my God! Call the police! Welcome to Amazon Go. We call it Just Walk Out Technology. Piece of shit. Don't be overdosed. Piece of shit. Take whatever you like. Sometimes when I call 911, nobody answers. No lines, no checkout. No, seriously. Shoplifters don't seem to care His who's watching. Once you've got everything you want, you can just go. Tap it. Filling bags and backpacks in the middle of the day. You can keep going. Amazon Go. You back yeah. Yeah. Good. Good morning. Good morning. Not enough crime. Release. I love. I love the the counter. Whenever I fucking shit on cops, the counter is, dude. What if someone? What if when someone breaks into your fucking house and like tries to kill you? What then? Who are you gonna call? It's like, yeah, I'll call the cops. But I might as well call the motherfucking Ghostbusters at that point. I'm dead, bitch. Who cares? It's over. Someone broke into my house. It's not like cops are these like magical fucking beings that stop crime uh, before it happens. Like, that's my point. It's such a weird fucking take. Hassan experiencing cognitive dissonance. Bro, please, please Google the fucking words you throw out there, dog. Please. Please throw, like, just before you fucking write shit in the chat, like, ad hominem, straw man, cognitive dissonance, just, like, Google what you're fucking saying, learn it, and then use it. Pepe La Fox, hey, I've got a story for you. Jesus Christ, this dude is insane. God damn. Oh, is he a Yang ganger? Of course he is. Oh, never mind. He's not. He's making fun of Yang. Okay. You just got saved. It's the felons. So it was ordered. Anyone who had non-violent misdemeanors, serving sentences of less than a year, or scheduled to be free in 30 days or fewer, was released. What do you think? And the results? Predictable. One man only lasted 37 minutes before being arrested again. Another man was arrested three times in one day. First for attempting to break into a vehicle, next for stealing items out of someone's front yard, and then again for stealing a vehicle. And each time he was arrested, he just moonwalked his out of there. For his seventh time, he got arrested for stealing a vehicle. Bro, for... For, like, this is such an... Ins this is the same as Donald Trump. Like, this is literally Donald Trump propping up, like, one undocumented immigrant and be like, well, this guy murdered and raped, so obviously they're all bad. Like, it's psychotic. Yeah, you, you really think that fucking the people that got arrested, the overwhelming majority... Please stop saying it's a joke. Please stop saying it's a joke. This is just 100% chud shit, okay? This is straight up perma chud. My dick's hard thinking about how much criminals are running away and getting away with it because I... Saw, like, three fucking insane examples. You, 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 like, you can make chud jokes. Like, I know that it's a joke. I get that it's a joke. But it's also a very Republican one. Okay? Vehicle. So apparently he's not very good at it. Crime rates went right through the ceiling. <laughs> Famous criminal time. Takashi69 was released early from his 18 month sentence and instantly broke Instagram and YouTube records with his live stream and music video. Other high profile names asking for early release include 
R. Kelly. Bill Cosby. Martin Screlly. And our good friend, Billy McFarland. Break up time. Then some prisoners came together with an idea. What's your plan? Well, if we have an outbreak at our prison, then maybe they just have to let some of us go. Worth a shot. So prisoners at the North County Correctional Facility tried passing around water containers and shared a mask to get it. It worked, somewhat, as 30 prisoners soon tested positive for the virus. But then administrators cottoned on to what they were doing, and none of them were released. Speaking of people who should be in prison, celebrities. We have forgotten about the important people. Guys, we're bored too. They crave the attention. They need it. Without it, they will surely shrivel and perish. But when everything gets shut down and they're trapped in their homes and can't get on TV, they begin to go a little stir. Okay guys, now I know we're all feeling the struggle right now. Without television and press following you around, you need to make yourselves trend. We need you now more than ever. Jimmy, Jimmy, female Jimmy, you're the funny guys, you must continue working from home. Your biggest competitor now is a Swedish boy that reacts to funny videos on his kitchen floor. Sounds doable. It was toilet paper. It was a huge box of, I was like a <coughs> kid on the toilet on Christmas morning. 60 double rolls of heaven. You get to play that fun game, protected from the coronavirus or a botched nose job. <laughs> Or both. Uh Everyone in here is gay. Hello, everybody out there. Dude, it's fucking... It's... Oh, my God. This... <laughs> no, no, shut it down. How about an uplifting song to boost morale? This could be our generations. We are the world. Yeah, I can give it a go. I love uplifting music. Thank you, gal. Imagine there is no heaven. Easy if you Imagine there's no heaven. This is not the time when everyone's Grammy's dying, you fucking idiot. Imagine you feel no like they that they feel like they did something yeah. significant. There. She's so happy. She's Gal Gadot, whatever the fuck her what name I is, did Wonder Woman. I lost my job at the meatpacking plant, but Gal Gadot sang Imagine. And it's a today. terrible version. You guys suck at singing. Yeah. Thank you. Oh boy. Madonna. <laughs> How about an inspirational True. speech to lift those faces? I mean, spirits. That's the thing about COVID-19. It doesn't care about how rich you are. It's the great equalizer. And what's terrible about it is what's great about it. It's literally not, by the way. Madonna's not getting fucking coronavirus, dude. It's straight up not the fucking equalizer. So many people kept saying that shit, too. Like... So many people kept like, oh, yeah, it's just like coronavirus knows no boundaries. It's like, no, bitch, class still 100% supersedes. Like, and in America, beyond class, of course, racial disparities are very significant. We're all in it. We're all in what? Even I myself, I'm in a fucking better situation than like 98% of Americans because I'm sitting in my fucking basement basically every day. I don't need to leave my house. What's terrible about it is it's made us all equal in many ways. And what's wonderful about it is that it's made us all equal in many ways. Jesus Christ. Maybe just stick to singing. Cause there's no more pasta. Oh no. So we're gonna eat some fried fish. Okay. Okay, the worst part is when... Didn't she have her son do a dance? She had her son do a dance for Black Lives Matter. I wonder if he put that in Not there bad. too. Not bad. Let's try somebody else. Keep it positive, you know. Cause the last shit comes from motherfucking China. Thank you, Cardi. You See, if... If the Chud historian was a little less oh, Chud-like, he would've fucking popped that one in there too, but... Paints champ. You really are the voice of reason. Come here, man! Let me tell y'all motherfuckers something. Guess what, bitch? <laughs> Well, that was... Vanessa, maybe you can speak to your fans? You seem to have a lot of free time at the moment. Like, 
yeah, people are gonna die. It's just terrible, but like, <coughs> inevitable? Oh god, oh jeez, we're losing them. You guys in your massive houses and complaining isn't relatable at all. We need to meet them on their level. I've got this. Cry for a second. <laughs> I was gonna do it by myself and then I thought, you know what? It's important for everybody. It was so bad! Why the fuck did they do any of this? Listen! If you if your net worth is over 10 million dollars, I have one advice for you, okay? Let me give you a free piece of public relations advice. Shut the fuck up. I'm going to repeat that again. If your net worth is over $10 million, just shut the fuck up. It's literally the best advice I can give you at a time of a fucking pandemic where people are like dying or they lost their fucking jobs. Just shut the fuck up. Shut, shut up. This is a deranged pervert. But before I continue, add time. You wanna watch this fucking ad? The name's Ray. Ray Con. But you can call me Ray Con Man. Dad, look, I got you a present. Thanks, son. Ah, uh, let's go through the old football around in celebration of skipping. Suck my dick. Those who want to watch the ad. And again. <laughs> Don't want to live in cyberpunk and have your brain all f***ed up by five. Oh, five air. Holy oh, shit. Print six bottle. How ad over. How long was that ad? That was like literally fucking... His name is Hussain. Humble yellow onions. Onion. Six barn onion. Gripping the onion like a tennis ball. It's time for an uplifting story. Prem Murti Pandey, 56, works at Mumbai Airport. Everything was going into lockdown and he wanted to be with his family. But they were in Allahabad and he was stuck in Andheri East. Just fly. No flights. Just drive. Not so simple. Roads are closed to all non-essential travel. Hmm, what to do? So he hatched a plan. I'll become an essential traveler. He started with the test case. He hired a truck and drove 200 kilometers to Pimpelgium. Bought 1,300 kilograms of watermelon. Hmm, so good. Come to terms with the already large quantity of melons we already have. And sent the truck back to Mumbai, where he had a cellar. Success. Wasn't stopped. Even sold the goods at a profit. We're an essential traveler now, boys. Time to do it again, but this time all the way home. So he hired another truck, got an onion permit, and this time bought 25,520 kilograms of onions. And the article says he disguised himself as an onion seller. I don't know what that looks like, so here's this. He then hauled <laughs> ass 1,200 kilometers over three grueling days and nights through three states to get home. He makes it. Now to sell the goods and see my family. He stopped at the wholesale market just on the outskirts of town and tried to find a buyer for the onions. Except, nobody wanted them. Onions? Anyone? Onions? Because of the lockdown, there was a huge glut in the market. Oh, that's a big onion. Look at that. Woo! Onions. Everybody loves onions. <clears throat> onions? Onions? No! Daddy's coming home, and he's smelling of onions. By the late afternoon, he just gave up and drove the truck to his house to be with his family. However, the next day, knock knock. It's the police. Oh no, you're not here to buy some onions, are you? And they were not. So he spent the next two weeks in the quarantine center, and he's still looking for a buyer for the onions. Mr. Clean gets rid of dirt and grime and grease in just a minute. Mr. Clean will clean your whole house and everything that's in it. I mean, like, I wouldn't get mad at him for the fucking onion story, like... It's an interesting story. It's not like he's fucking making fun of the dude or whatever. 
it's an interesting story that he found out about and he told us. I don't think that that's like as bad as the fucking clear cut agitation against uh, people doing people not even convicted of like minor crimes and shit. I need some hand sanitizer. <laughs> When the outbreak first happened, there was one clear piece of advice from the WHO. Who? Wash your hands. You know what? Actually, here. Here you go. Who else wants some one-week bans, baby? Does anyone else want it? Yeah, I'll, I'll dish out. I'll dish out a couple, like, fucking six-monthers. There. That's good enough for now. Does anyone else want some? Okay, power tripping. You get permed. Both soap and hand sanitizer would work, but we had plenty of soap. So naturally, we panicked about the hand sanitizer. Good thinking. That's gold. That's gold. And panic soon turned to profit. Hmm? People had seen the rush on toilet paper and they knew to get in quick. And two of the fastest shoppers in the West were entrepreneurial brothers Matt and Noah. They hopped in their truck and drove from town to town, state to state, buying up every bottle they could get their immaculately disinfected hands on. Hundreds. Grabber, grabber, grabber. By the end, thousands. 17,000 bottles in all. The plan? Sell them on eBay and Amazon at a huge markup. It was you the perfect such grind. scumbags. Well, I'm but also, technically, hey, that's just that's just the way the fucking cookie crumbles, bitch. It's called the free market. Look it up. Price gouging. You mean normal capitalist enterprising individuals doing what's best for them and their family? That's what I thought. Until the inevitable happened, Easy everyone crap, got super mad. The New York Times, low on hand sanitizer themselves, decided to investigate the brothers. And they wrote an article. The unsterilized masses made complaints. I don't like this one bit. Please send the cops immediately. And then someone went to Jeff <laughs> and told. Jeff made their online accounts go to sleep. eBay followed suit. Now there was nowhere to sell their goods. Then the law got involved, and the DA said, price gouging illegal. Me angry. So the authorities called up Matt and Noah. Hey guys. Hey, good to hear from you. You too. I'm afraid it's not entirely a social call though. Oh no? Yes, price gouging illegal. So what you want, uh, prison or philanthropy? We're sending over a squad car now. I have decided to give back to the community. So the police pull up, the media too, and Matt and Noah announced that they will be giving it all away for free. <laughs> they did an interview for television and wore this amazing shirt. The pricing on Amazon was higher than, it was definitely higher than retail. Would you say you're sorry? No. $70 each? Dude, you are such a scumbag. Oh my fucking Lord. If only Americans could have this exact same mentality when it comes to other things that are in, that have inelastic demand permanently built into it. Like, I don't know, healthcare, motherfucker! If only Americans could understand the concept of price gouging when it comes to fucking big pharma! Ah! <coughs> I just want health care. Oh, I don't think that I would. Note. A similar thing happened in Adelaide, Australia, when a man bought up hundreds of packs of toilet paper and hand sanitizer. Then he realized he couldn't sell it and tried to return it all back to Drake's supermarket. Drake himself told the guy to please leave. I told him that. He has a YouTube channel, by the way. But this did little to abate the shortage of supply and overall price gouging. But don't be too mad at these guys. They're small timers. Microscopic. Compared to China. Stop! Oh, uh, sorry. What I mean is... Compared to the brave heroes at the CCP. Quah, there's an outbreak. Xi Jinping, 
You're our only hope. So a call was sent out to companies all around the world, especially in the West. We want you to send staff out to every retail store you can to buy up personal protective equipment, especially masks. And ship it all back to China. Thank you, Xi Jing. All in a day's work. The scale here, by the way, is just ridiculous. Millions of face masks. Three million masks. 2.4 billion pieces of protective equipment. Don't DMCA me, internet historian, please. I really liked all of it, especially the parts where you said that people were getting arrested and, and then getting out and doing crimes again over and over again. That was real and true, and, and I... I definitely watched the ad too, through and through. I watched the whole ad. Shut the fuck up, chat! The moment is... 700,000 hazmat all suits. All flown out in a private jet. We just wanted to ask you guys what all these products are and where they're going. Uh, we're just going to if you went out to buy a mask in January or February and noticed that there were none left, it wasn't just because there was a big rush on them. It was because there was a big export. And then when other countries had a shortage, the CCP swooped in to sell locally manufactured masks back to Europe and the United States at an escalated price. Only then later for them to be found defective and needing to be recalled. Got him again. Imagine if we had manufacturing that we controlled on U.S. soil. Just a thought. Just saying, now hear me out on this. Imagine if China did not control the overwhelming majority of our supply chain. Just a thought. Anyway, back to the hand sanitizer specifically. There was a shortage. So New York Governor Andrew Cuomo stepped in with a solution. It's up to me now. He unveiled his new line of hand sanitizer. Open the curtain, please. NYS Clean. A 75% alcohol strength concoction made by the humble citizens of Great Meadows Correctional Facility. Floral bouquet. Little I detected. Lilac. Chat. Hydrangea. Tulips. What does it smell like to you? Tulip. They were capable of producing 100,000 gallons every week. I don't know if we'll mention this, but the best part about that is that it's not even real. Like, they didn't even actually make it. They literally... One, it's slave labor, which, of course, never in America. Guys, come on. America is, is above that kind of behavior. It's only slave labor in prison. Gulags only exist in North Korea. We would never make prisoners engage in... Slavery, so that we can have hand sanitizer. It was much cheaper than any other product on the market, mainly because the price of labor was pretty much zero. Other pharmaceutical items that disappeared fast were vitamins, cough medicine, and critically... Oh, well, he didn't mention it, so I'll, I'll, I'll mention this part, but... The fucking hand sanitizers that they were making, they literally weren't even making hand sanitizer. It came out that they were just repackaging pre-existing hand sanitizer with New York State branding. Like they would buy wholesale and just pump hand sanitizer. It's not like they were like making it. Inhalers. How many ohms you vape in there? It was tough for the asthmatics. Already picked on for their <laughs> feeble bodies. Their weak lungs. <laughs> Embarrassing. Everybody laughs at the asthmatics, even if we, you know, pretend and say nice things to their face. Is the work forced? I don't know. Why do you think technically every time a police officer has sex with someone that they've imprisoned, it's still rape or sexual assault? Because you can't fucking consent to free labor when you're in prison, dog. Same with you can't technically consent to fucking uh, saying, yes, I will have sex with you to your jailer. I mean, yeah, it's literally always sunny in Philadelphia level referencing here, but because of the implication, Mac. 
The big one would be gloves. Once they were recommended, there was a run on them too. And once those were out, there was a run on, surprisingly, condoms. The thinking man's glove. If you need to press a button on the elevator or push a trolley around the grocery store, uh. no problem. Just use your cock. Last story. In a medical center in Delhi, there's a gang of monkeys scheming. Son of a bitch. I'm in. True story, right? Some red-faced rhesus macaques, tired of their situation, go rogue. They bust out of their cage and attack a researcher, snatching COVID blood samples as they make their way to the exit. Give me that. No, Mojo, no. Put that down, bad monkey. They make a break for it. Evade. Yes, in America, it is literally legal to enslave someone as long as they are imprisoned. For those of you who did not know this, I don't know how you would not have known this, but that's, it's literally the law. Like, slavery is illegal except for if you are in prison. Aiding staff and guards and leap out the window to freedom. One was later seen in a tree, chewing on one of the samples. Ooh, yummy. In a further act of defiance, another was seen chewing on a surgical glove. Apparently it's become a big problem in Delhi. God, those Monkeys everywhere. They snatch people's stuff and even break into homes. It seems that nature isn't just returning peacefully. It's come back with a vengeance. And if we intend to survive, we're gonna have to learn to fight back. So anyway, with this knowledge, we will conquer Earth and rule over it once again. <coughs> oh no. It's here. His name and that's about it. Probably Random no chimp part event, three dude. unless something ridiculous happens, like an autonomous zone in Portland or the government shutting off utilities. Plugging the second channel again, you bet. We've got a feature length Sonance Reject coming out in a bit over a month. This one's going to be over an hour long, so grab some popcorn, maybe a little viewing party, watch your favorite streamer. This one will be more fun as a group. But before that, next week, there's a new In the Field. Thanks for watching. Stay good. Are people gonna His get the- His name is Hassan! I hope I, uh, I hope I reacted hard enough! For all of the, um... Was it not hard enough? Fuck. Okay, I'll try. I'll do better next time. I'll do a redo. Oh my god. I felt- I felt you were pretty fair in your react. Please never. <laughs> Actual criticism like you did is protected. Would you consider your pris the prisoner of firefighter slaves? Yes. California right now is experiencing.